Well, the mechanism and the reason why blend division is so physiological in a way uh, is based on the fact that we're using a natural aberration, which is called spherical aberration. It's an aberration that the brain is fully trained to interpret and to filter. The use of spherical aberration is to increase the depth of field for a given focal, basic focal distance. The increase in depth of field uh, is limited in using spherical aberration by the fact that if you put too much spherical aberration into the eye, then you lose contrast. So within the range where we don't lose contrast, we change spherical aberration. That increases the depth of field, and we use a micro monovision to cover the entire range from near to intermediate to distance. And because in the intermediate range, the visual acuity is similar, there is fusion between the two eyes. And so we have basically a binocular procedure where stereo acuity and other binocular functions are, 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 are retained. Well, uh, the challenge of presbyopia is, is the final frontier for, for uh, refractive surgery. And it's the biggest problem we have because 100% of the human race is affected by presbyopia. Um, I think what distinguishes presbyon laser band division from all of the other current approaches is the fact that blended vision provides the least amount of compromise. And what we mean by that is that it's a procedure that is instantly reversible by a pair of glasses without any loss of contrast, without loss of stereoacuity. Uh, because there's only a small anazimotropia, together with the increased depth of field, the intermediate zone becomes a blend zone. And so there really is continuous vision from near through to intermediate through to distance. Night vision is also unaffected by this procedure, something that unfortunately is affected by many of the other uh, options. Well, personally, uh, I've now treated uh, about 5,000 patients with laser blended vision. Sounds like a large number, um, I guess it is a large number, but you have to understand, of course, that I started doing this um, about 10 years ago, in 2003. Um, and I guess one of the advantages of developing something is that you get to be one of the first people to use it. Uh, Carl Zeiss has programmed this into their Melady system using the CRS Master. And so now the Presbyon product uh, is basically a one-button push so that uh, it's just a, a choice as to whether a surgeon is treating a presbyopic patient or not. And all of those calculations are done in the background. I get asked a lot about um, how uh, cataract surgery and laser blended vision interact. If you're going to have cataract surgery before, can you then do laser blended vision? Well, um, at least in my practice, what we call premium cataract surgery is the use of a high quality intraocular monofocal lens for the cataract procedure. And then we use laser blended vision in order to obtain the continuous high quality vision from near to intermediate to distance. Similarly, if someone has had cataract surgery, particularly if it was done with a monofocal lens, blended vision is an excellent option for offering patients the most independence from glasses uh, as possible. If someone has had a multifocal lens put into the eye, you can also use blended vision because the pre-op aberrometry, if you can obtain it, um, will modify the algorithm. And so you will not be, if you like, uh, doubling someone's aberrations and worsening their contrast, despite the fact that it's already been somewhat compromised by the multifocal lens. I think one of the reasons why so many ophthalmologists have opted to have blended vision is because of the knowledge that there is no change to the quality of vision with this procedure. The other thing is that this is a completely reversible procedure, not just with spectacles, but also by surgery. The reversal is done as a simple enhancement. This is quite different from a discontinuous optical profile that one might see in multifocal corneas. Spherical aberration is a natural aberration, and I think most ophthalmologists are familiar with that, and that's why they feel comfortable 
uh, let's say, with that uh, as an option for themselves.